told you I, I do these videos at random, but before we began, let me um uh, turn out the music a little bit. Cause I couldn't I couldn't upload the video on the other one that I used to do the history of sin part one. But this is part two, this one's gonna be short. Matter of fact, like I said, let me turn the music down and let me cut a timer on. Hold on. As I said, I do things sporadic, and there, there's a rhyme and reason behind it. But everything I do, everything I do, kind of comes off the cuff, somewhat to some degree, and I just choose when and where I'm going to do it and what have you. Like I said, there, there's no promotion behind it. Is go lie? Oh, oh, you want to invite on? Let me guess. You want to try to reel it in? Don't worry, dude. I'm going. I'm gonna put the timer on this one because, like I said, this one's gonna be short. Let me say that before I, well, out of, I'll go ahead and invite you on camera because you're my homie or what have you. Hope you got the invite. Anyway, I'm putting the timer on and the reason why some interviews past the present are a little verbose and what have you is because um, when I'm dealing with the past, there's, I don't know, there's a certain aspect I, I, I like to think I get a hold of, like trying to rewrite the past and everything. Everybody has some kind of past that there sometimes hey, some might be proud of some might not be proud of and I can't say musically well I can't say musically there's certain aspects of my past I'm not too proud of and every time I would cover that area in the interview I sometimes wish I could rewrite it and probably give in a long conjecture on on the aspect of my past probably forces me to get real wordy and lengthy on it thinking I'm rewriting it or trying to convince people that that I'm rewriting it and hopefully changing the minds about it. But you won't have to worry about this uh, particular thing I'm doing. And like I said, this is the history of sin part two. Somebody actually has the history of sin part one. I don't know who uploaded it, but somebody uploaded it on YouTube. And it wasn't my team. It was somebody independent. Hey, like I said, fans do what they going to do and what have you. And thank you for spreading the gospel. In any event, this one's going to be short because this is the present. There's really nothing to cover in the present, like, in, is, what the hell? I don't know if that's music or somebody's getting tapped out above my head or whatever, but I hear some kind of screaming mono or that's what it sound like. Any event, like I said, this is all off the cuff and so on and so forth, and I really don't expect to get blood in here initially because they didn't with the history of sin. They eventually did over time, and that was late at night. This one's during the day, and... More people might flock in over time because of it being during the day and it's not late at night at 12 at night. People got to get up for work and anything. But what are we going what we're going to cover here? And I said I was going to set a timer. Uh, yeah, I got a timer right here. Say so once the timer goes off, then it's time for me to go to other activities. And I think we're already, what, maybe two, three minutes in. I, I just set it for. I said it for fifty. No, I said it for fifty-five minutes. I don't know how long I was going, but fifty-five minutes. Once that timer, once the timer goes down, that's it. Time to hang it up and, like I said, go on and so on. And it, this one still says bring them on camera. So, all right, I added you on camera, dude, and hopefully you would jump on. If not, we're still going. We're still going to move forward anyway. The present. Part of the history of sin. What we're covering is what's going on currently. As I said, the past is done and over with. I probably said it um, a great deal. Very wordy in the past interviews that I've done. Explain the history coming up. Uh, have a great holiday, man. Yeah, man. It, it, it all depends. I, I stay busy all around, and I'm not really a festive person, but I, I still appreciate it all the same, and thank you very much. And as I said, what we're covering in the history of sin part two is basically, like I said, what's going on right now. That's why this one isn't going to be wordy because we're kind of we're we're staying with what's going on today, and what that means is everything post pale horse. 
like Morningstar, there's nothing to cover with. Morningstar, Sins of Nature, or Soul of the Beast, nothing with the OG hunting season, nothing with the hunting season annihilation. There's nothing to cover with anything I've done in the past because that's all done and over with, whether it's part of the Gospel of the Apocalypse or whether it's part of the Lionheart series, as short-lived as, as that was. We're talking about what's going on with the man, the arcane author, camera why the hell is you getting fuzzy oh well y'all live and what have you so long as you can hear and make out somewhat let me see if i could just the uh, focus on there we go just to focus on here let's start with um yeah let, let's start with kill god that is the next thing in no actually let, let's take it from the beginning let's let's take it from the beginning in the present great stairwell now Great Stairwell will move, but it probably didn't move enough, and that was only because it came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. Another person that want to be brought on camera? Okay, bring him on camera. I thought I... Bring Joshua Phil. Okay, I, they'll receive an invite to join your broadcast. I mean, sorry about that. This isn't... This one isn't um, patched in because I have a new case for this phone, and it's a lot bigger than the holders on here oh well yeah i'll try adding you dude it says invite but it said phil just gonna have to watch like everybody else i think josh got the invite but he's not jumping on camera no problem don't worry josh you don't gotta reel it in anyway continuing on the gray stairwell let's talk about what the gray stairwell is it's i think i explained in the history of sin like i do eps in between large LPs or large albums and basically what the EPs are are kind of like uh, what I call bridges they connect they connect the overall story because I think I explained in a very lengthy and wordy interview last night and probably in the past that everything is a saga it is it's not an anthological series is like I said it's a saga it's one long running saga every piece of music I do is interconnected and you put the you put together like a piece of a puzzle and it'll play a big big long series for you kind of like uh christ the crisis on infinite earths on cw or yeah just look at it like that putting a television series you put them all together is like the specials and it makes one long thing that you watch from beginning to end you get the gist of what the whole idea is about this is what the gospel of the apocalypse is about and we already did morning star and hunt season Pale Horse, well, Morningstar Hunt Season, Haunt of Fear, and Curse of Darkness and all that, and we kind of move into Pale Horse, but we're moving away from Pale Horse. It actually starts with Pale Horse, but Pale Horse was in 2010, and as I said, we're bringing you up to speed. And that bringing you up to speed is the Gray Stairwell. Now, what the Gray Stairwell is, as I said, is a bridge and EP that connects on... Um, it connects Pale Horse to the next upcoming gospel, which is two gospels. I explained that in last History of Sin, and that's Enoch's Concerto, uh, the Book of Hades and the Book of Persephone. And basically what Great Stairwell is, is kind of like, uh, it is not so much purgatory, if you will, as it is, it's just the, it's just the road to the destination. That's all the great stairwell is, is the road to destination, whether it be the highway to heaven or the no, stairway to heaven, highway to hell, whatever, however you want to look at it, that's what the great stairwell is. And the first half of great stairwell is just basically talking about uh, redemption and just more more peaceful thing. I mean, there, there's really not a dichotomy on the great stairwell like there was with hunting season and morning star. And to a lesser degree, pale horse. This, I mean, there, there is and there isn't a dichotomy to it, but it's, it, it's not as prevalent or heavy as Morningstar say. One side was definitely good and one side was evil, if you will. The the split is there, but it's, I don't know, it, it's more of a lighter note. Um, the songs on the Great Stairwell, Paradise Lost, that '90s show, and. Heads in the clouds. Paradise Lost is just basically about. Yeah, Paradise Lost is basically about just trying to find redemption, and just analyzing the life that I lived and determining the life that I live will it take me to paradise if I die, or will it take me to punishment when I die? That's pretty much what Paradise Lost is about. 
And for for the fans, what have you, Paradise Lost is going to get continued on Enoch's Concerto. Part 2 of Paradise Lost is called Dante's Inferno. <laughs> you, uh, you you was typing that up when I was talking about it too. Yeah, the the divine comedy, Dante's Inferno. Yep, Paradise Lost is part one. Dante's Inferno is part two, and that's gonna be on Enos Concerto. But yeah, me and you, me and you was thinking about it. But yeah, you're right. Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. You're right. Um, except except the uh, Divine Comedy I'm doing, Enos Concerto is divided into Inferno and Paradiso. Although I will say because you're you're up on you're up on uh, the Divine Comedy, the Purgatorio or Purgatory, there is kind of an album that is kind of purgatory. What's up? How you doing? Don, how you doing, Don Chaos? Yeah, the um uh, the subsequent book the fourth book will probably be more purgatory, but that's down the road. That's we might talk about that in the future, what have you. But continuing on, that's what uh, Paradise Lost is about. Uh, the next song, that '90s show. If you got the gist of it, if you ever watched the '70s show and to a lesser degree the '80s show, there was an '80s show, short-lived, one season. You could catch it on YouTube. A yeah, pretty good show. They they could have went somewhere with it, but they didn't. They didn't. And the dude, the lead on there is actually he was the lead on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but moved on to another show. I don't know if that show's still on or not. I ain't catch it. I have to see if any episodes on Hulu. But yeah, the guy that I forgot his name on uh, it was Dennis. He played Dennis on It's Always Sunny, and he was the lead on that 80s show. Like I said, the last of the season. Anyway, that 90s show, you pretty much got the gist of what that's about. Talking about the 90s and what have you. The 90s was a great thing. I'm talking about Fago. And like I said, this was before ICP and all that. Because Fago was cheap in the hood. You can afford that. And it came in a whole bunch of crazy different flavors. And when I was enjoying Fago, it was Morning Mist. Um... Yeah, Midnight Mist, Morning Mist, Arctic Sun, all kind of crazy flavors. Used to just drive around drinking and just nighttime. Can Carnival Spirits get a shout out? Carnival Spirits, okay. Uh, what's up, the Carnival Spirits? You getting a shout out and what have you? I mean, I don't know if that's something that you're doing or you're talking about the Spirits of the Dark Carnival and what have you. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know, but hey, Carnival Spirits, you get a shout out and. Living the dead, well, dead spirits, you get a shout out to Pale Horse. But moving on from that 90s show, there's Heads in the Cloud. Heads in the Cloud is just talking about, um, it, it's just a song I wrote, just feeling good, talking about doing what a V. Uh, what's up, homie? How you doing? I would love to interview you. Okay, if you interview me, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, Rock and Rock and Black, Black Rain. Hold on, whoa, 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 Black Rain. What? Oh, yeah, I remember Black Rain. That's the black grape flavor, right? I think I remember that. I, I think that came in like the late 90s, early 2000s when I was up to drinking Black Rain. They, they sold, yeah, Detroit Rev. Hey, they sold Black Rain here. I forgot all about that one, but that was like that black grape flavor soda. I, I was buying that too, along with cotton candy, candy apple, whole nine yards. And you said, I would love to interview you. Okay, I, I warn you ahead of time. If I don't know if you caught the interview from last night and what have you. Um, it got kind of verbal saying, talk to some of my team and everything. And we had a little discussion about it, but I will say, Carnival Spirits is, oh, it's a site. Oh, my bad. Yeah, my team just put me up on game with Carnival Spirits is. And of course, you can get a shout out. Hey, hey you show love to me, I show love to you. But... As far as an interview go, yeah, I do an interview, but here's here's the format right here so that way we can keep the interview tight and short and I'll promote it. Make sure you have all your questions together that you want to ask. Every single thing, think of what you want to ask me and have it all written down, have it all ready to go so that way I will try to touch, uh, touch upon it one at a time. If I get a little too lengthy... Pump the brakes and what have you. Let me know. and what It depends on what you ask me. If you're asking me stuff about the past, I'm going to end up getting lengthy. If you're asking me stuff about the present and future, you don't got to worry because it's going to keep it short because I'm just dealing with what's in the present right now and the future is yet to come, so I can't really touch upon the future, but there you go. So hit hit, hit me up in the inbox. Let me know when you want to get the interview going. I love to do it. Thank you very much.
Oh, and you said, yep. Yeah, I remember Black Rain. Black Rain was some good stuff. I hate that Fago reduced the flavors, though, man. I, I I mean, they got Arctic Sun right now, and I might end up going to go get some Arctic Sun as soon as I get done um, going through the present. But, yeah, I miss I miss Morning Mist, Midnight Mist. I miss um, Black Rain, too. Uh, cotton Candy. No they, no, they still sell Cotton Candy. I think it's Candy Apple they don't sell no more. I miss that. And the first fake um, flavor of Fago I dealt with was a long time ago. This was much love and respect, brother. I appreciate that. First Fago flavor was on uh, cream soda. That that was always my favorite cream soda. Uh, I, I think since I was like eight or nine years old, it was cream soda all the way till I hit fourteen to fifteen years old. Then that's when Arctic Sun got inch. No, Arctic Sun came around when I was sixteen years old, hanging with my cousins in Bay City. And if you listen to my music, I, I talk about Arctic Sun here and there along with Zemas and hanging with my cousins. But like I said, I don't want to get off into meandering to they sell candy apple here in Colorado. I am not driving all the way to Colorado for Candy Apple, so I'm just going to have to go to 313 and see if they got it there since Detroit is home of Fago and what have you. They might have it there. They just don't have any uh, can Candy Apple up here anymore. But continue on, heads in the cloud, and, I, and right now to catch up on people just now tuning in, I'm talking about the Gray Stairwell. We are already covered Paradise Lost. Already co you could just rewind a video and check it out. I covered Paradise Lost. I covered that 90s show. We're on Heads in the Cloud right now. Like I said, Heads in the Cloud was a feel-good song. Basically talking about just succeed and uh, take care of my kids and make sure that my kids have a prosperous future when it's time for me to check out with the Twilight Huntsman. Hopefully I check out with the light. If you're familiar with Pale Horse and the mythology behind Pale Horse, hopefully I'll see the lantern and not the shotgun and the sword. If I see the shotgun and the sword, I'm on my way to hell. I'm going to suffer on my way to hell and I'm going to burn there forever and ever and ever. We'll see what happens. Uh, as of right now, I think I'm going to be joining the demons of hell, but hey, that's life. What can you do? In any event, moving on. I haven't really covered the intros, the ascent and the descent, because you could you could get the gist of it. It's the ascent upstairs on the great stairwell, and it's the descent. There's really nothing to cover with that. It's kind of self-explanatory. Moving to the other side of the um, disc, and let me refocus the camera. There we go. All right, moving to the other side of the disc. Something Wicked. Something Wicked was something that I wrote a long time ago. I, I mean, I wrote it when I was in the military. I, I didn't have a chopper style on it when I wrote it. It was initially wrote just kind of straightforward and what have you, but I added the chopper style once the beat came into play. And the idea for Something Wicked came from, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Final Fantasy or not, but if you're familiar with Final Fantasy VI, there's, it's, it's toward the end of the game, the last boss. And if you're familiar with the Esper Tower, it's the first it's the first music of the Esper Tower that you fight before you fight Kefka. And I heard that and I was like, man, you know, I could sit up there and spit some to this. Because it has a rhythm to it that if you put some drums behind it and add a few instruments here and there, you could actually spit something to it. So I had my homeboy James do it because I didn't have my equipment ready at the time. I mean, I tried to attempt to do it when I had my equipment, but too much stuff was going on. Never got got the song finished and I tasked it to my homeboy James Alias. He hooked the song up for me and at first he was trying to convince me not to kind of you not to kind of um it uh was it extrapolate or I might be using that wrong but try not to play the melody of the Esper Tower because it might get kicked back when the CD pressed up and I assured him that believe me it's not gonna get kicked back because that's kind of an obscure song. Though Final Fantasy is a pretty hot property and what have you, it's still an obscure song, so it's not going to get kicked back. Or it's an obscure melody. And surprise, surprise, Great Stairwell got pressed up, didn't get kicked back. I was more worried about Paradise Lost getting kicked back because of how close it sounds to uh, Gangsta's Paradise than uh, Something Wicked getting kicked back. But Something Wicked was basically just me flexing. What's up, Tone? How you doing? Uh, yeah, Something Wicked was just... Me flexing, just flexing the wicked shit and everything, nothing really behind it. And like I said, trying to adopt more of a chopper style because if you noticed on uh, 
the evolution of what I'm doing, the Morning Stars, the Morning Star era was more straightforward, kind of hip hop here and there with elements of chopping thrown in there. I've been doing chopping for a long time, but kind of slowed down because I got around my homeboy James Alias and his cousin Doug, and they they are chopper masters. We could talk about them before my time is up, but yeah, something wicked was uh just me flexing wicked shit and. Flexing uh, chopper style, trying to adapt to it because I'm going to be using that heavily in Enoch's Concerto and other ones. And then I'm going to switch up the style again when it's time to lead the era of Enoch's Concerto. Next one after that is uh, The Light Bearer. That one is telling the story of Lucifer who fell from heaven. Or who got ousted from heaven along with his followers and what have you. And basically his purpose on earth is pretty much to bring anybody he can to hell with him and what have you and suffer and like i said it's just pretty much the story of lucifer's downfall and what have you that's what the light bearer is about the original title of light bearer i was gonna call i am as in i am lucifer but now nah, i just went with the light bearer instead because if you're familiar with morning star light bearer lucifer uh, the last song on that EP, The Great Stairwell, self-explanatory title track, and as I said, the first verse I'm talking about, uh, when you walk up the when you walk up the steps, you when you make that ascent, you're walking toward peace, paradise, and a peaceful, uh, eternal, eternal laughter. And then when you make the descent on the steps, you walking into pain, punishment. Hell, fire, sorrow, and suffering. And on the third verse, I'm just kind of going back and forth between making the ascent and the descent. I want to give a shout out to... Um, crap, man, I'm, I'm bad with names, remembering names. But she was an excellent singer on there. Uh, her real name is Amy Jacobs. I'm, I'm sorry if I said your real name and you probably want your... Uh, was it Lissa Sir? I think I'm saying that right. L Y S S A C E R. Lissa Sir. She did. She provided me with the vocals on there. She promo She provided the vocals on the chorus of Grace Stairwell. Excellent, phenomenal singer. I want to tap her again. Okay, I, I want to make sure I'm saying it right. I want to task her again. For some stuff on Enos Concerto, because I believe that she could she could probably give me some very powerful vocals on some of the stuff I got planned for Enos Concerto. But other than that, uh, if you're familiar with my Steve somewhat, if you remember the hunting OG hunting season and hunting season annihilation, there was a hidden track at the end, and it was just detailing the um, the forthcoming book, and that one was Pale Horse for Hunting Season. The the hidden track on this one is detailing the next book coming up, and this one is Enoch's Concerto. That's all it is. That's that's the great stairwell. Now, we move forward into what's, what's coming up next. And when I talk about the present, I'm talking about great stairwell, kill God, haunt of fear three, Enoch's Concerto, and then we're wrapping it up. And how much time do I got right now? Uh... Okay, I didn't turn the phone off. Give me one second here. I got 35 minutes, and I probably ain't going to use all that 35 minutes. Uh, I'll probably use the rest of 35 minutes or use the remaining time to basically chit-chat with y'all when I get done. But I always thought the turning of Samael to Lucifer would be dope as a track. Sam Samael... Oh, I was up there reading about Samael and Azazel and what have you, and I thought, and I, I was thinking those were different angels according to the book of uh, the book of Enoch, which is why I call it the Enoch's Concerto. I don't know if you read that. It's like a apocryphal scripture, and it talks about uh, it talks about what heaven is supposed to actually look up look like, the suffering and punishment of the angels being chained to stars for 10,000 years. All the angels that got cast out of heaven and buried underneath the earth, and yeah, you should yeah you should check out Enoch, uh, the book of Enoch. That that book, yeah, that was a very inspirational book. But like I said, it talks about God sitting on the throne, what heaven looks like, uh, the purgatory for all the souls waiting to be released, um, all the wayward angels that followed Lucifer and got cast out with him. And like I said, one of the I know one of the names is Azazel, and I think the other one might be Samael too. Too, but yeah, Samael to Lucifer would be dope as a track. Yeah, we'll see what happens in uh, Enoch's Concerto. Like I said, I'm gonna be on some other shit there. 
But anyway, let's move on from Great Stairwell. Let's talk about Kill God. Kill God is part three of my Silent Hill X series. Silent Hill X um started in in Kansas. I wrote that. In, yeah, I wrote that in Kansas. Made an instrumental for it. Never recorded in Kansas because what's up, home? How you doing? And thanks for the kind words this morning from the lengthy interview that um I gave yesterday. This interview is gonna be a lot shorter. I got a timer right here. Once the timer runs up. It's over with. Time for me to check out. So I'm going to try to uh, scoot through this and then I'm going to interact with y'all. Then I'm going to out of here. Anyway, uh, uh, the Silent Hill X series started in Kansas. Wrote the music for it, but didn't had no place to record it back then. Recording studios weren't. You didn't turn on the faucet of recording studios. What's up, Scott Venkman? How you doing? Back at you. Uh, yeah, recording studios weren't a dime a dozen, or you didn't have home equipment to record in, and you had to travel to and pay some money. And I'd rather travel to Michigan to record what have you with my homeboys, as opposed to paying um, engineers and everything that I didn't know and didn't know my style and everything. So I never recorded Silent Hill X in um, Kansas, but I did record Silent Hill X here. First, it started out as a solo track, and it became part of the Lethal Legacy track, but that's Silent Hill X one. Then I did Hunting Season for Psychopathic, Silent Hill X moved there. Then I redid Hunting Season again, Annihilation, and I put Silent Hill X on there. Then there was, uh, who is it, Wolfpack's compilation, When There's No More Room in Hell. I remixed it and called it the Samael remix and put um, Silent Hill X on there. Then we finally moved forward because everybody knows I love doing remixes and what have you. Finally moved forward to... Um, uh, Silent Hill X2, which is My Heaven. My Heaven never got a whole bunch of remixes after that. My Heaven was a one shot, one kill deal. And basically, the first Silent Hill X was all about me going out of my mind, losing it, walking in between drinking. Walking in between dreams and nightmares and what have you, and it kind of fit the whole thing that was going on with Morningstar. My heaven was me slipping into the darkness, getting ready to take a trip through death and through death, despair, uh, depression, and sadness and darkness, and walk with the Twilight Huntsman. I mean, if you followed the, if you followed everything going on with the Gospels, the Arts, and the Keys, and what have you, then you would know my heaven was pretty much a uh, thematic around that. Basically, it was all about darkness and being chased by spirit evil spirits and and wraiths and everything that's what my heaven was all about kill guy is actually taking a trip through hell uh, yeah basically it, unlike the great stairwell while i'm talking about heaven possibly going to heaven and going to hell the kill god is all about hell it's all about fire fiery spires and pillars demons and devils and Death, bloodshed, it's going to be some evil, evil shit, which is why it's called Kill God, Silent Hill X3. Uh, we're trying to knock that one out. I actually had uh, all the verses recorded in Detroit the past couple of weeks, what have you, but just been too busy to get back there and finish it up. And I'm going to get back there and finish it up, but I might do it all over because basically I went back to my roots as far as like being in Kansas when I used to listen to Speed Not Mobsters. And listen to Do or Die, Crucial Conflict, and Twister and all that when I used to live in Kansas. And I just picked it up again, threw in Psychodrama too. listened to a whole bunch of Chicago, uh, the, the chopper style from Chicago. Now, I listen to a whole lot of chopper rap and everything, trying to improve my chopper rap. But the one thing I will say about a lot of choppers, some of my favorite choppers, Tech 9 of course, Tech 9 is dope as hell, like... Uh, like Crazy Bone, um, and if you ain't know, if you ain't know, now you know, the DOC was an excellent chopper, Big Daddy Kane was a chopper, but my most favorite chopper of all time is Twister, and when I tell you hands down, this dude is ridiculously fast, I mean, he chopped, I mean, if you didn't know how fast Twister can go, what I recommend you do is go check out his Running Off At The Mouth, his debut LP that came out in 1992, you, you gotta check that out. I mean, this was before he adopted a more gangster and hustler style that he's using right now to do a lot of his albums with. Back then, this was more uh, conscious rap, more hip hop, it, more that early 90s um, New Jack Swing hip hop conscious rap that was going on. 
in the early 90s and as i said you you have to check out uh, running off at the mouth this dude oh my god let's see big looney is a dope chopper and hurricane of chopper click hey thanks for the recommendation i have to check them out too but like i said twister i'm telling you if you think tech nine is fast and i give props to eminem too eminem uh, he a dope ass chopper too and jordan lucas but when I tell you Twister is insanely, ridiculously fast, and that mother got the lungs of God, I am not bullshitting. Check out Running Off at the Mouth. There is one song on there, I can't think of the name of the song, but this dude, it's like he's just trying to prove a point, and you don't understand shit this dude's saying. He is just, just going on and on and on, like going for at least about maybe five, five bars, six bars, Probably a whole entire uh, 16, 16 he doing. He just chopping, just, you don't understand. Shit he said, and it's going triple time. Like, Twister is fucking insane. But like I said, I'm back to listening to, uh, right now I'm listening to everything. I'm trying to get inspired, try to pick up some melodies and everything that I'm going to incorporate because the thing that I'm going with for Enos Concerto is more orchestral. And let me explain the differences real quick. And I, I, like I said, I'm not going to take up too much time because I got a, I got a timer here. Morning Star was more, more uh, a, a slash between mainstream sound acid rap, if you will. And what have you, if you're familiar with early acid rap, that's what we're going with is the early 90s acid rap. And that's where I was going with it. And whereas Pale Horse was more gothic and gloomy, a lot of, a lot of heavy, heavy themes in the instrumentation, organs, and just a more gothic sound. Just like kind of down, just dreary and dread. Um, Enos Concerto, I'm going more for orchestral symphonic vibe, which is why it's called Enos Concerto, um, Overture to Heaven and Hell. And I'm, I'm going for a more symphonic vibe. I mean, it's still going to be some wicked shit. I mean, like I said, there's the disc of Persephone and the disc of Hades. And if you're familiar with Persephone, Hades, Hades tried to, uh, I think Hades did kidnap Persephone. And I forgot who went down to rescue Persephone from Hades. But Hades... Technically, Hades isn't even so much the god or overseer of hell. I think, I, I forgot who it actually was, but uh, but I'm just going with Hades for the general uh, consensus of Hades being a representation of hell. Um, the book of Hades and the book of Persephone. But that's what I'm going with for Enos Concerto. But finishing up, as far as the Silent Hill X... Oh, my heaven, like I said, kill God, that's what kill God is all about, it's all about suffering in hell, fire, flames, torture, agony, misery, that's what kill God going with, and like I said, I'm going, I'm going with the chopper style, got, a, got um, inspired by Twister and Buck of Psychodrama, like I said, Buck of Psychodrama, the way he be spitting uh, his style is, is very unique, it, it, it kind of reminds me of Beast from, um, uh, the house it, it almost sounds like beast but it's it, it's his own thing i i just like how um buck from psychodrama sound not only on the adrenaline rush but the psychodrama um uh, album i was listening to too moving on to haunt of fear 3 while we continue with the present technically it's the future but we'll put it in the present day because we're talking about what's going on now he is he is was the lord of the underworld, not a demonic being, more of a caretaker of the afterlife. Well, there you go. Yeah, the yeah the under yeah pretty much the underworld wasn't so much a place of suffering. It was more it was just more a destination for certain spirits to go to and what have you. I, I forgot how the mythology went. Like I said, correct me if I'm wrong. This was stuff I was reading a long time ago. Uh, psychodrama is the shit. Yeah, he is. Well, not yeah, he is. They are. Let, let me make my correction. Nuisance. Yeah, Nuisance. Um, Buck and who's the other dude? Ah, fuck, I forgot the third dude name. But yeah, psycho, psycho drama is this shit. But sorry, third guy, I forgot your name. I'll probably remember it later. But yeah, Nuisance, Buck, and uh, ah, I forgot the third guy name. But they are dope. You gotta check out psycho drama. Psycho drama is dope. Love that album. Uh, going with Haunt of Fear 3. If you're familiar with the Haunt of Fear 1, that was um, the Haunt of Fear title track, uh, Last Man on Earth, Sasha's Tears, and Ghost Ship. That was Haunt of Fear 1. Haunt of Fear 2 was Maniac at Large, The Closet, 
uh, uh, Terror in the Cellar, and fuck, man, I, I forgot my own shit. Uh, uh, Josh, you on there? I see you still on there. Help me out there. What's the fourth song on? Uh, yeah, what's the fourth song on Haunted Fear Two? Fuck. Uh, uh, give me one second here. I I just look it up. I got the computer sitting in front of me right here. Uh. I just look it up real quick. Since Josh taking forever, can't help me out here. And I got 23 minutes left, so well, I was about to wrap it up anyway. I told you I'm keeping this one real short. Uh, let me let me look up on YouTube on um, the YouTube real quick since my homie is taking forever to look this up. Uh, Haunted Fear Anthology. Uh. Yeah, there we go. Haunted Fear Anthology. The fourth song was The Final Sunset. Sunset, sunset something. The Final Sunset. Got it. Yo, yo, what's up, Demetrius? Uh, I don't want to butcher your last name, so we just go with Demetrius. What's up, homie? Yeah, it was The Final Sunset. That was the fourth song on Haunted Fear 2. And it, it all got wrapped up in the Haunted Fear Anthology. Uh all right, got it, Josh. Final sunset, but thanks for playing. <laughs> anyway, um, that was in the Haunted Fear 2. What's going to be in the Haunted Fear 3, uh, it's kind of up in the air right now, but two songs I know I could probably confirm somewhat is uh, is Happy Birthday and The Evil That Man Voodoo. And as a, uh, if you're familiar with how the things are running for each Haunted Fear, they kind of lean toward what the next big gospel is going to be about. So this gospel is going to go ahead into basically things leaning more toward a hellish vibe, a more hostile hellish vibe and everything. But the one thing I know I could pro I possibly could confirm because I got some of the instrumentals for it is um, Happy Birthday and The Evil That Men Voodoo. That's Haunted Fear 3, and we're looking at probably putting out Haunted Fear 3 maybe in February or March of next year, but I know uh, Kill God coming in January because the reason why I'm, I could I could finish up Kill God this month, but I want to keep it I want to keep it a more festive holiday vibe, so right now I'm going to talk about it's Christmas too. Silent Hill, oh yeah, you missed that one. We already got through discussing on uh, Silent Hill, um, Silent Hill X2. My Heaven and Kill God Silent Hill X3. But uh, you can rewind a video and you can probably catch what I was talking about with Silent Hill. But yeah, uh, yeah, we moved on. Like I said, I got to keep it moving so that way I don't get bogged down and repeat myself and being redundant. And right now we're we're finishing up the Haunt of Fear 3. As I said, uh, I can probably tell you at least what two of the songs about. Uh, Happy Birthday is about a wayward spouse and the punishment they get. They get for being a wayward spouse and actually there's some history behind happy birthday too i can tell you in a second while well, sticking with haunted fear three and the evil and same thing with the evil the man man voodoo is about some drug dealers visiting um the islands the islands in the caribbean uh, i think it was jamaica i think they go down to jamaica or in haiti they go to haiti and basically they run into some trouble because of some shady um business dealings they were dealing with down there i want to give way too much but like i said look out for the evil the man voodoo and happy birthday on a haunt of fear three now the history behind happy birthday and uh the evil that man voodoo i'm not familiar, i'm not sure how familiar you are with v sinister but i used I, I still do comic strips and comic book art when i get a chance to and what have you and at one point in time i used to do um independently for my own enjoyment a comic book called creep show it was like stephen king and george a romero's creep show and i did uh two stories for it actually i did four stories um one of them was happy birthday other one was evil that men voodoo another one was called um how uh well happy halloween and i forgot what the fourth one was but as i said i don't want to give away too much with the evil that man voodoo and uh happy birthday because you will see when haunted fear 3 comes out because i'm still keeping the same thing that uh that i used to create those comic strips a long time ago Happy Halloween was about uh, 
an exchange student that came from Romania to a high school and it was a group of boys that used to give her a hard time. Well, two, it was a group of three boys. Two of the boys used to give her a hard time. Third dude had a crush on her and everything. They used to call her a vampire and all that because she used to wear a scarf around her neck and they never knew why she had a scarf around her neck and what have you. And they figured they, she wore a scarf around her neck and was always wearing sunglasses, kind of like a goth chick. And they was just giving her a hard time in school or what have you. So basically, they decided to follow her home one day to see if she was a vampire and what have you. See what the deal was, Mister Comic Strips. Uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm bring, hey, I'm bringing the comic strips back. I, I could touch, I could touch upon that when I wrap this up because we're about to get the Enos Concerto bits and pieces of it. Don't want to get too much away, but yeah, let me wrap up what Happy Halloween was about. Anyway, the boys follow the goth chick home or what have you. They they peer through a window and they see she's about to shower. She takes the scarf off and around her neck and she got two um two bite bite marks on her neck like vampire bite marks and what have you. So they freak out and what have you and she hears the noise but they take off running saying she a vampire this and that and everything. So basically, they go back to school, all, all high school, all freaked out and everything because they think the chick's a vampire. Then they end up getting invited to this party by two other chicks and what have you. And the two other chicks said that the girl with the scarf around her neck was going to be there. So the two boys end up teasing their third friend who has a crush on a chick, telling them that uh, he better bring protection with him and not talking about prophylactics but a steak garlic holy cross holy water whole nine yards they just laughing about it so they go to the private party they, they go to the party think it's gonna be a big party but it was a private party with just the three girls and the three dudes well they're sitting up there drinking and everything time goes along and then each of the girls go off into a respective room with the dudes and what have you and then that leaves the shy guy along with the goth chick and what have you. So they go into a room and so on and so forth. Her uh, accent real thick, uh, Romanian accent. And basically the dude's all freaked out. He got a backpack on him. So he decides to set the backpack on the floor, but it flops open and he has holy water and a steak and everything in his backpack. And the girl's looking at the, uh, the girl's looking at the, contents on the ground wondering what was going on why he got a steak why he got all this and that and so on and he's like well he he thought that she was a vampire and everything he want to protect himself but she tells him no she tells him that basically she knew that she was being spied on and everything and explains that the bite marks on her neck was from an animal attack from when she was living in romania and basically she wears a scar around her neck I mean, a scarf around her neck until the scars heal up decently, and then she'll take it off or what have you. But basically, she wasn't a vampire or nothing like that. Never got bitten by a vampire. So basically, they start making out in the room and everything. And then the moon starts rising and it gets brighter and starts shining through the room. And the room grows darker because of the light, outside light coming inside the room. And basically, she gets naked and what have you. But then. Her eyes start turning red and everything, and fur starts growing on her, fur starts sprouting on her and what have you, claws start protruding and so on and so forth. And in the last panel, she uh, leans in toward the dude and told him that basically, well, while she's in the middle of transformation, she's telling the dude um, basically what he should have brought with him was a rifle with silver bullets, what have you, because she wasn't a vampire. And in the last panel, um, she says that she's a werewolf and basically her friends that invited his friends over were werewolves too so they had a choice they either could become werewolves with them or they could become a werewolf child what have you and that was the story of Happy Halloween I want to draw creep show again and what have you but I'm just a man that does not have a lot of time on my hand but one day when I get one of these endeavors going that could perpetually take care of everything in itself. Not only am I going to do the comic strip and then the Thriller music video starts. No, because it's not a video. It's a comic book, you asshole. Anyway, um, as far as the comic strips go, like I said, it's just a matter of time. I'm, going, I'm, I'm coming back with season three, I promise. It could be worse. Season three is coming next year. Sorry I missed this whole year with season three, but I was insanely busy trying to get everything back in order, and that's what I'm doing right now. But season three of It Could Be Worse is coming. Uh, 
Kill Kill God is coming. Haunt of Fear 3 is coming. It's just I'm trying to section off everything to find time to do it. But it's all coming though. Uh, but moving away from Haunt of Fear 3 because I gave you tidbits on that. Let me see how much time I got left with. Uh, okay, I changed the clock. I have exactly 14 minutes. And we're wrapping up the last thing. Enos Concerto. It, it, you can already get the gist of it. Like I said, this is kind of like what me and homie was talking about earlier. Uh, the Divine Con Comedy, Dante's Inferno, and what have you. And that that's what Enos Concerto is about. The Punishment in hell and the paradise in heaven and what have you but it's not it it kind of is going to be leaning toward a judeo-christian theme per se of fire and peace and what have you but i'm gonna have my own unique interesting take on it so it won't just come across as being preachy or anything like that because hey whatever you choose to worship or whatever you don't worship doesn't have anything to do with me your, your own individual do as you please as long as you ain't hurt nobody or forcing your beliefs upon anybody else hey do what you do that's what i do i'm not forcing my beliefs upon nobody and i ask that you don't force your beliefs upon anybody just live your life for you be as happy as you can and just be a wonderful individual and treat everybody the way you want to be treated but as far as the Enos Concerto, that's about all I got for Enos Concerto because I don't want to give too much away. But that's the present. That's what we're looking at is the Great Stairwell. If you have not picked that up, thecineverse.com. Go there and go into the store for thecineverse.com. Help me out here, Josh, because you on here. I'm trying to promote this. You my guy that runs all that. Help me out here. Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Reverb Nation, TheCineverse.com. Check out The Great Stairwell. Like I said, you will not be disappointed. This is not hunting season psychopathic EP. This is not anything you heard in the past. This is something very different. And all I'm asking is that you check it out. Uh, continue your collection of building up the Gospels and everything. Because I promise you, unlike a lot of artists, I ain't going to say it. Uh, I will say a lot of artists because there are some artists who's pretty creative and everything, but everything I'm telling you and everything I'm putting out is all interconnected together. Everything is like a piece of a puzzle. I'm not just doing random albums that basically sound like the last album because, let me see, yeah, thank you very much. Y'all check that out, www.thecineverse.com. Keep it going, Josh. Hit them off with the links. Get the grace there. Uh, yeah, uh, all your albums are dope. Thank you very much. Now, I, you know what? I'm I'm going to stop you right there. The Fallen EP is garbage. Hunt Season, the OG Hunt Season, was it was okay, but it wasn't what it fully could be. So that's why I recommend Hunt Season Annihilation. That's the full potential of what I envision hunting season to be because I was behind the boards on that and made all the cost and decisions of what kind of effects I was going to use on everything and how I was going to EQ everything. Hunting season annihilation. But I still appreciate all the same. I'm not taking away from your compliment. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. But like I said, Fallen EP, the Fallen EP I did is hot garbage in a dumpster rolling down to the Saginaw River trying to douse itself and hunting season... Love the great stairwell. Will you ever do a box set? Oh, like uh, like the uh, gospel box set? Oh yeah. Follow V Sinister. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Me and my homeboy Josh was talking about um doing box sets and everything, but you know they do get kind of costly, and the Enos Concerto box set is going to be very costly because there's a lot of stuff coming with it. But if we had if we had to do box set for each one, um uh, the Helios era will be Morning Star, Soul of the Beast. Hunting Season Annihilation, Haunt of Fear 1, Haunt of Fear 1, because technically Haunt of Fear 2 should have been attached to Pale Horse, but no, actually we'll probably do Haunt of Fear Anthology because it's already up in there anyway, and The Curse of Darkness, that will be in the first box set. Second box set will be the Pale Horse box set, that will be Pale Horse, A Requiem for the Darkness, um, The Great Stairwell, Kill God, and Haunt of Fear 3. Third box set, of course, it would start off with Enos Concerto, and I think I, I think I hit y'all off on what was to come after that. We could talk about the present. I mean, it kind of goes into the future, but since y'all are here and what have you, I'll give y'all some exclusives. The cutoff point was Enos Concerto, and after Enos Concerto, the next uh, EP coming after that is, uh, is Karma Sutra. Then there's Haunt of Fear. No, it's Karma Sutra. 
Then there's Haunt of Fear 3, because I'm technically getting all these out of order. Actually, Kill Guy should come at the Haunt of Fear 3, but no, whatever. I got Kill Guy ready to go. I'm going to get Kill Guy out the way. But technically, it should be Pale Horse, Great Stairwheel, Haunt of Fear 3, Kill Guy. So the box set for the third box set, third gospel, will be Enos Concerto, uh, Karma Sutra, uh, uh, what was it? Haunt of Fear 4, and. Uh, Silent Hill X4, I think I called it the Downpour. No, Silent Hill X4 Purgatory. That's what it's called. The next Silent Hill X is going to be called Purgatory or what have you. And then we go into the fourth gospel. But can't talk about it now. That's the future. Maybe we address it or what have you. Maybe not. But yeah, as far as the box set go, that's what we're looking at. I got eight minutes left right here. And look at that. I talked about... I talked about Pale Horse, talked about Morningstar, all the Silent Hill X's, Haunt of Fear 3, even touched up on Haunt of Fear 1 and 2, and went back and revisited Hunting Season and everything, and talked about some of Enos Concerto, what you can expect, and even had enough time to address a creep show story that I did a long time ago and the comic strip. So, that is the present. We're done. Well, we're... You know what? I said these videos going to be an hour and everything, so I got eight minutes left right here. I'm done talking because I gave you all the information of the present. I don't know when I'm going to drop uh, the history of sin, the last part, which is the future. Hopefully, it won't be a whole bunch of months from right now, but ain't no telling when that's going to be. But I got eight minutes left, and help me kill eight minutes time. Ask anything that you want to ask right now. I, I will answer anything that you want to know. Sorry about that. Like I said, my phone's not attached to this stand right here is basically is basically just sitting up there holding itself up but uh okay the comments disappeared on me hold on for a second uh okay i must have hit something where the comments disappeared so it's still showing on live what have you so yeah so I'm not sure if the comments will show up now because, as I said, nothing's nothing's showing up right now. Hold on for one second. There we go. All right. Yeah, I moved the comments out the way when I picked up the phone. As I said, you got seven minutes and eighteen seconds left to ask me anything that you want to ask, what you want to know about, whether we go back to the past, who playing SmackDown versus Raw, hear the soundtrack in the background. Uh, technically, that's on. Uh, uh, oh no, that's not SmackDown vs. Raw. That's a uh, that's the theme music to uh, what's the name? Tommaso Ciampa on NXT. I, I like listening to wrestling things. Basically, I got I got all the wrestling things on my iPod touches. And yeah, I use iPod touches just for music or for shows and what have you. But I got a a lot of wrestlers i um theme music on the iPod touch. What you hear right now is Tommaso Ciampa. He's a NXT champion right now, and as soon as I get done with this, I'll probably have the pay-per-view that came on last night playing in the background while I'm sleeping before the next set of people come in that I got to train. But that's what you're hearing is uh, Tommaso Ciampa, NXT champion. Uh, let's see, till a question pop up. Like I said, I only got six minutes left. Uh, let me see. Hey, Josh, is there anything that you want me to address to tell anybody that I'm forgetting? Because... Let me see. Glad you still got lots going on. Short story. Long much X got jealous when I would look up or listen to anything of yours. So I lost track of what you were up to. <laughs> oh, tell your ex don't be jealous. I'm, hey, I'm just a human being. Maybe. Uh, Let me see. Will you be doing any shows anywhere anytime soon? Let me address both of y'all. All right, let me see. I'll address Corey Stanford, SmackDown vs. Raw. That's Tommaso Ciampa theme music you're hearing. Jim Boyle's long time no see. Um, like I said, tell your ex I'm only human, per se. <laughs> I'm only human and everything. And trust me, I'm not a threat at all. I I'm not a threat to nobody. I'm just, I'm just me. That's all I am and what have you. But I'm glad you're still keeping up on what's going on there. Oh, yeah, I still got lots going on. I think when you came to the show back when I did Morningstar Soul of the Beast, that was only the tip of the iceberg. You came to the show, and it may have not been as packed as the Hunting Season Psychopathic release party or what have you, but it's still a good show, but I don't know how much you was keeping up 
after that, but if you were keeping up, you know a whole bunch of stuff had went on after the uh, Morningstar Soul of the Beast release party. But glad you're still keeping up, and I hope um, you able to pick up The Great Stairwell, Pale Horse, Hunting Season Annihilation, or basically listen to them first. That like like my homeboy said right there, that's my right hand man. It's all on Spotify. You can find it on iTunes, YouTube, Reverb Nation. And also, I want to promote too before I forget. Uh, let me see. He's an ex. I don't tell him shit anymore. Laugh a lie. <laughs> you an incubus boss? Uh, let me see if I got. I'm going to answer these two questions real quick and I'm going to touch upon that as far as the mythology before V Sinister and what have you. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. Right now, there uh, y'all probably seen it promoted on the page. It's Christmas. That was a Christmas song. And basically, during the MySpace heyday, when I was promoting this Christmas, it's Christmas got me a lot of buzz and what have you. And it also was the second most downloaded song right behind Twisted. I remember seeing that. Hey, I would have I would have had a screenshot, but phones back then didn't do what phones do right now. Like the whole iPhone thing didn't come in until just a tiny bit later and what have you. And I didn't I didn't have that. I had like a flip phone. Yeah, I had a flip phone and you know, you had to press one button three times to send text messages and all that stuff. So I wasn't able to screenshot that. And I, I didn't realize you could screenshot computers back then on computers. I wasn't all that tech savvy back then with computers like I am now. But yeah, uh, it's Christmas was the second most downloaded song behind Twisted, which surprised the shit. I mean, all of Michigan, that surprised the shit out of me. I was like, damn, a whole lot of people downloading. It's Christmas like that. They loved it. It's Christmas um, got me a, a good, a fair amount of heat. So it's Christmas is up right now. Like I said, no wicked shit. It's a wicked shit embargo until January because I want to keep it festive. Check out It's Christmas on Spotify, YouTube. Re well, I don't got to up on yet but i will get it up there but it's christmas uh listen to it with your loved ones which you, by yourself in your car in your earbuds on your computer at work off work wherever you get a chance to check it out on uh, like i said spotify youtube revert well not reverb nation is not up there yet and itunes what have you two minutes ago let me see let me keep moving down will you be doing these shows anywhere anytime soon I got to get the busyness under control because I got a lot of endeavors going on, but I'm looking back into getting the shows. I want to get back to the Canada and what have you, but I hope Jay Reno ain't mad at me and got some heat with me and everything. I was supposed to do a show with him last year. Unfortunately, the money that I had to use to get my passport to get into Canada, I had to turn around and prevent myself from getting evicted from my place because I had to go to court over that and had to um, pick up a few more endeavors to get some money going or what have you. But hey, when the show come up i will and i would and you all you always know you got to come to v sinister page i will be promoting that where I, wherever i do a show at i'm gonna promote it so if you can make the show i hope i see you out there um you an incubus boss uh let's see i got a minute and 30 seconds to tell you this so let's just say a long time ago i think i i think i even well, no, I don't think I think I touched upon something else in the history of sin. But a long time ago, back in 1988, ironically, the following year, Eshan would come upon a scene, and, and taboo stuff like that wasn't so taboo anymore because all the all the lemmings followed Eshan. It was all over his dick and everything about him being a devil worshiping rapper and everything, or that's what they called him back then. But this was 1988. I was 12 years old. My big influences back then was Friday the 13th, the series, and like horrific shit. I seen Friday the 13th, the series, and seen that Louis Vondredi made a deal with the devil to curse his antiques and try to get fame and fortune from it, and then an idea popped over my head. You know, hey, let's study some demonology, let's study demons, Ashtore, Orbus, Mephistopheles, Lucifuge, Satanakia, Ron V, uh, Flaga, Beelzebub all kind of demons and everything and let's see who can offer the best deal and what have you and there was one night that i was up there cutting into my finger trying to draw blood so i could draw out a, a pack on a sheet of paper in my blood and everything so i could call up a demon and try to make a deal with him and see what i can make happen and unfortunately 
Can't finish the story. Maybe have to finish it another time, what have you. But that is my time. But I will say before I get off, let's just say I'm pretty well versed in demons, demonology, and what have you. And if I die and go to hell, it would not surprise me at all. But hey, we'll see what happens though. But uh, incubus, I wouldn't really say I'm an incubus, although the nature of an incubus though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, some people will probably say I will fit that category pretty well and what have you, but I'm not an incubus though, but I don't know, but thanks for tuning in, I appreciate y'all stopping in, sorry if it got a little wordy, but as I said, the whole point of this video was to cover the present, and what we covered was the Great Stairwell, and the Great Stairwell killed God, Haunt of Fear 3, at least two songs I could confirm for it, The Evil That Man, Voodoo, and Happy Birthday, and the thing that I was going with with Enoch Concerto, and I even went ahead into the future a little bit with uh, Karma Sutra, yeah, Karma Sutra, Haunt of Fear 4, and Silent Hill X4 Purgatory. So, uh, the Sinister, I don't know if my homie Josh, who was up on here, y'all seen him put the links up there, is going to put this video up on YouTube, or somebody else is independently going to put this video up on YouTube, but I'm glad y'all tuned in. I'm sorry for leaving y'all hanging, but I, I try to run outside of time and what have you, so that way I'm not I'm not binding myself to time and stuff becomes dated, but I hope you... Y'all stuck with me long enough and everything. Y'all might as well stick with me to the end. And there's only three more books to go. We already got Morningstar done. Pale Horse done. We're working on Enos Concerto. There's only two more books left. And that's the end. Whether it be the end of me, the end of V Sinister, or the end altogether, I don't know. We, we, we'll see what happens in the future. And I hope when the future get here, I'll see y'all there. And if I don't see y'all there, then, hey. Y'all see me in the ground buried six feet beneath the dirt and probably burning somewhere and working on my way to overthrow hell and try to take out the uh, trinity of darkness, which is Lucifer, Ashtoreth, and Beelzebub, and try to seat myself upon a throne like Lucifer tried to seat himself upon a throne in heaven before he got cast out. Who knows? I'll be sinister. I'll see y'all on the history of sin, the future, whenever that may be. As I said, these are sporadic videos. I just do them when the need comes through and feel like it. I'll holla at y'all later. Peace.